to truly understand mysticism, you need to understand the language of mysticism or the way it's expressed, such as the esoteric, the exoteric, the Gnostic, the Hermetic, and, well, I don't like to even mention the word Thelemic, but the Thelemic as well. Adolf Hitler certainly understood the Thelemic very well and applied it, and, well, you can see where it got him. But let's go back to the exoteric, exo. It's like an exoskeleton, which is a lobster or a crab, something like that. So if something is exoteric, that means it is hidden in plain sight. And there are so many exoteric, mystical signs all over the world. People walk by every day, and it's just something that they take for granted. They don't really know what they're really looking at, what's really there, or much less what it means. It's hidden in plain sight. The esoteric means that it is the sacred and the secret. And it may be one of the harder of the mystical expressions to truly understand. It is the sacred and the secret. This is, these are things that are truly guarded. They're truly held sacred. So then there's the hermetic. A lot of people, you know, throw that word around without truly understanding what it means. But the hermetic means it's cast in stone. It's hermetic. It is sealed. It's the way it really is. And then there's the Gnostic. And there's one that becomes pretty difficult for a lot of people to understand. And <clears throat> very few people know that there are still Gnostic masses that are held. People say, well, the Gnostic, what, what truly is that? Well, to be quite honest, it's just the feminine side of God. That's all it really is. When you get to the Thelemic, well, that's the bending of will. That is a manipulation of will through what's called transmutation. Transmutation is the exchange from the mental thought, which is the spiritual, into its physical equivalent. And the highest echelon of transmutation is just through the spoken word, certain vowel sounds in which something manifests itself in the physical equivalent without one having to physically put their hands on it in any way. So the long and the short of it is to understanding these different forms of expression of mystical writings. So when you read something, you understand the expression of writing, therefore you get a total different meaning. The entire Bible is written in these four forms of expression. And until a person understands when they're reading a portion of the Bible or the Quran or the Torah or the Talmud or whatever they're reading, doesn't matter, they recognize that, oh, well, this is extremely Gnostic because it's as a female would be expressing herself, talking to you, telling you about her experience, and then you go, okay, I understand. This is a woman's point of view. So this is very Gnostic. So until a person understands this form of expressions, then they're not really going to understand what these ancient scrolls are telling them. A great example is the Papa Vu, which is the ancient book of the Mayans. It's their own version of creation, a pre-edemic man, not of Adam, but of pre-edemic man. <clears throat> and it is written very esoterically.
And most people, when they sit down and they start reading that book, they just put it down and they go, I have no clue what they're talking about. It makes no sense to me at all because of the terminology and the expression <clears throat> that it's written in. So this is where the mystical orders come in. The sole purpose of all the mystical orders <clears throat> is to dispense an ancient knowledge and hopefully wisdom that cannot be gleaned from any college or university that exists on the face of the earth. Well, why is it just this just thrown out there? The truth of the whole thing is that it's very powerful. It really has a meaning. It really has a power within it. And you don't want the world in general just to know all of these things simply because of that. Look what Hitler did with it. Boy, and he understood it. He knew how to apply it. He knew how to use it. And it is truth. It's powerful. <clears throat> But he misused it, which is very obvious, and it brought about his demise. And very few people stopped to realize that these leaders and world powers during that time of World War II, they were mystics as well. And so I guess you could really say you had evil mysticism against good mysticism. So <clears throat> there is the answer to what a lot of people get confused and the occult and how they think it's it's all something doing and dealing with the devil. Well, it can be if you want it to. That's up to you. You're a free moral agent. But bear in mind that you had the good mystics in World War II, the allies, and don't take my word for anything. Do your own homework. Look at all these war leaders at that time and you're going to find out that they were the mystical orders, and they prevailed. So, mysticism is stranger than any truth, pardon me, mysticism is stranger than any fiction that I've ever come across. And it doesn't seem to have an end, it doesn't seem to have a beginning. It seems to align itself with eternity. But isn't that what we're all aligned with? Isn't that what's really going on? Aren't we just passing through? I remember a song that was written by Leonard Cohen back in 73, and it was sung um, by Bob Dylan, Joan Baez, the Pointer Sisters, and the Earl Scruggs 50th, uh, well, it was anniversary special. I, it may have been the 50th. But anyway, it goes like this. I saw Adam leave the garden with an apple in his hand. I said, now you're out, what are you going to do? He said, plant some crops and pray for rain maybe raise a little cane. I'm an orphan now and I'm only passing through. Joan Baez comes in and she says, I saw Jesus on a cross on a hill called Calvary. Do you hate mankind for what they've done to you? He said, talk of love and not hate, the hour's getting late. I'm only one soul and I'm only passing through. He goes into the chorus, passing through, passing through. Sometimes happy, sometimes blue. Glad that I ran into you. Tell the people that you saw me passing through. Bob Dylan comes in. He says, I was with Washington at Valley Forge, shivering in the snow. I asked, why do men suffer like they do? He said, men will suffer, men will fight. They will die for what is right even though they know they're only passing through. Passing through, passing through, sometimes happy, sometimes blue. Glad that I ran into you. 
tell the people that you saw me passing through. And we're all just passing through. I don't want to pass through this any more times than what I absolutely have to. So mysticism, I know, speaking for myself, affords me a way where I can pass through this world and ascend to a higher plane of understanding, of awareness, of oneness with earth, air, water, fire, stone, God, people, everything, to where hopefully I can reach perfection where I don't have to come back down here and do this time after time after time again. So in my passing through this life as a soul personality, I want to be able to integrate into the being or reach nirvana, which is talked about by the ancient Brahmins, the, where the being and the self or the soul and the soul personality becomes one and they're no longer at odds with each other. And that can only come about through the spirit. So that's a whole different subject. The spirit, the many expressions of noose, all the powers that it has and the way it expresses itself and what it does. So bear in mind that you're only passing through.